This video is brought to you by Software Keep. Get your Microsoft products at a discounted price. Apple only gave the base 15 inch MacBook Air 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of SSD. And even worse, when we opened it up, we confirmed that yes, it only has one SSD chip, meaning the storage is really slow. So, what happens if you spend the extra money and upgrade to 512 gigs of storage? Or if you go up to 16 gigs of RAM, well, in this video, we'll show you the real world differences and I will give you guys real recommendations on who should spend the extra money instead of just some theoretical stuff. Now you might think, who cares, I'll just wait a little bit longer for my transfers, but that's not going to be the whole truth. First, let's run our standard SSD speed test. Dang guys, look at that difference right there. Now the base one is going to speed up a little bit on a second run. And we ended up settling at 1,538 right compared to 3,390 over double. And as far as the read speed, it is almost double if you spend the extra 200 bucks going up to the 512. Now here, it seems like we have double the speed, but let's go ahead and plug in our external SSD. And now I'm gonna transfer our PC test folder over here. As you see, it's 117 gigabytes. And we started transferring at 1.3 gigabytes, the fastest the SSD could do, and now it's slowed down to about 260 because most SSDs, after you wrote enough, they slow down dramatically. It's almost done here, and bam, that just got done. I cannot believe this. That's probably the longest it's ever taken, five minutes and 40 seconds. And guess how long the 512 model took? 57 seconds, yes, more than five times as fast, not just that twice as fast difference we saw before. Now, if you're thinking, I don't care about transfer speeds, I'm not gonna do big transfers, well, this is gonna affect your real world performance as well. But before I get into that, if you like working on documents, spreadsheets, or slideshows, our sponsor, Software Keep, is giving our viewers 25% off genuine Microsoft software like Microsoft Office for Mac. They're fully legit since they're a Microsoft certified partner with over 100,000 five-star reviews and great customer service with 24-7, 365 customer support. So buy Microsoft Office for Mac or any of their other software today and save 25% off their already low prices by using the link below and the coupon code MTECH25. Now I don't wanna scare everybody off and be unreasonable. If you do buy a base model, it will still be very quick if you use a specific weight. So here I have Figma uh, online web design software and this project is brought to you by 500 Designs, one of the best studios in California. And here, as you guys could see, I'm zooming in. There's a couple glitches, but stuff is loading very, very quickly. Let's come in here. And on the 16 gig model, let's zoom in right here. Bam, took a second to load. The performance is the same. And then selecting and exporting 12 of these high resolution layers, both machines take the same a minute and 48 seconds to do so. And running our web browsing performance test, the performance is almost identical. So if you're just running one or two basic things at a time, the base model is perfect for you. But most people are gonna open up a bunch of tabs, uh, they're gonna have different applications they're not closing, and that's when you start getting into some stuff. Now before I open up a few things, I'm gonna run this baseline export as our last test without having anything else opened up. And in Lightroom here, or other applications that use both CPU and GPU, we could even see a difference with nothing else opened. And that's because even the 16 gig model is using over two gigs of swap. Our base 15 inch Air is using over four gigs of swap, but overall it's using less RAM because the MacBook itself and Mac OS is limiting how much RAM Lightroom can have access to, which is going to slow it down. Now, if you don't know what swap is, Basically, if you don't have enough RAM, it will use your SSD in order to act like RAM so the computer doesn't crash like they did a long time ago, but it can keep working. And that is where that slow SSD that I showed you in the beginning really starts to come in. Our $1,300 MacBook took two minutes and 20 seconds compared to one minute and 17 seconds on the upgraded model. So there, you're spending a little bit more money. It doesn't seem like as good of a value as 1300 bucks now, but the performance is almost twice as good. 
and this is just with Lightroom open. And now what I'm gonna do is open up 10 web browsing tabs here. I have my Google Drive, I'm gonna have YouTube opened up here, maybe with a video that I'm listening to in the background. I'll have a few different websites opened up that have a decent amount of media and then some simpler ones. And I have two of my email accounts opened up like I typically do. And as you guys can see, I'm using Safari, not Chrome, which actually uses more memory. So that's a tip if you have the base MacBook, use Safari. So right here, I have 10 tabs open. A lot of you guys say 10, I never have 10. I have 30, I have more, but I wanna keep it simpler for those of you guys that might not push it as hard. Just know your results will be worse. So as far as opening up things right now, you guys see right here, it took a little bit of time to load up. Um, that's just with web browsing tabs. I have my emails, I wanna open those. Google Drive, both of them were quick. So far, not bad, but let's go ahead and open up Lightroom Classic. Bam, both of them loaded it up just fine. Now I'm gonna switch between these images here. And let's go back into Safari. There you guys saw, it took about three seconds or so and then it had to kind of load it up, whereas this one was still instant. And that's just with one program open. And here in my Google Drive, the 16 gig model, super responsive still. Let's try the base one. You guys see that? It's already choppier, slowing down. So the system is getting worse in terms of performance. See, super smooth, that one was laggy, and that is just with 10 tabs in Safari. Now, the next I wanna do is re-export this, and let's see how long it takes this time. Wow, guys, we are already at 8.8, 8.9. Wow, guys, look at this. This MacBook is almost finished compared to that one right there. All right, guys, so this time around, the 16 gig model only took a second longer, one minute and 18 seconds, compared to three minutes and 32 seconds for the base one. So this thing dramatically slowed down, and now the difference is getting closer to triple. But with that said, I'm never just sitting around waiting for something to export. Keep in mind, this is only 50 images. It would take much longer. So if you had, for example, 200, 300, 400, this thing would take ages. I would be using the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that one more time. And let's check out the responsiveness if you're multitasking like most people will. So let's go over here. Let's open up Safari. All of that right there, you guys saw all the stuttering. Let's go into our Tesla here. Pretty smooth that it's op once it's opened up. Reloading there, reloading there, but not too bad. This page is open up just fine. YouTube right there, bam! The whole video had to load back up. Not crazy slow, surprisingly, but keep in mind, this is Safari. Chrome would be much worse. And by the time I open up Google Drive, it's reloading again. Now the stuttering is really quite bad. Oh my goodness. This is making it be very frustrating. Let's check out our 16 gig. I have to run this again because it's so fast at doing this test. All right, let's open it up. Not perfectly smooth, but look at this. Everything's open. None of this changed. None of the video went away. Extremely smooth here. Let's check Google Drive. Bam, instant, super smooth while it's exporting. Wow, guys, a lot of that is just dramatically slowing down. And while we're multitasking, I ran the speedometer test here and you guys could see that the base model, instead of being the same web browsing performance, well now it is almost half the speed that it was previously. And that's all affected by that slow swap and the lower amount of RAM. And if we take a look, well right now we're at six gigs of swap. I saw it was almost at 10 gigs earlier but it's probably trying to lower the RAM that um, Lightroom needs. If I open this up, we are still exporting. That is incredible. Here, I've done it already like four times. Bam, and right here, we have seven minutes and 16 seconds. 
compared to a minute and 18. That is, if you have the web browsing tabs open and you're multitasking um, while your export is happening, that affects the base model, whereas the other one, well, it is basically unchanged. So should you spend that extra 200 bucks or $400? And if you can only do one, which one should you get? Well, in previous videos, I showed you guys more tests, some video editing tests, some Photoshop tests, um, some logic, stuff like that. The videos were very long, but in this one, I just wanna sum it up because in video editing, you'll have a very similar performance to Lightroom over here. For Xcode, well, it is not as RAM dependent and it does a great job with swap. Um, so if you're doing a little bit of coding, I wouldn't worry about it as much. And if you're doing logic, well there, if you're doing very simple projects, 16 gigs, you don't absolutely have to have it. But if you start doing the plugins and you wanna really excel, um, then you definitely do need 16 gigs. Now, what's interesting is that Apple, where their configurations are set up, they have the eight gig, 256, the slow SSD model and the 512. So they're basically admitting that, hey, the base model, it shouldn't be like that. If you're gonna upgrade anything, you should upgrade your storage. And I would say that if you're somebody that wants smooth multitasking, smooth web browsing, and you're not trying to get maximum performance, I would do that. Now, if you could do both, as I showed you guys here, the experience is much better if you're multitasking, if you're doing productivity. Heck, this is just Safari and one professional application. If you do Photoshop and Lightroom, stuff can get even slower. Uh, so um, I would do both if you can, but if you cannot, um, I would say it would be worth just getting the better SSD. Not only does it keep your eight gigs running much faster, longer, you also get double the storage. So that would be my recommendation to you guys. And hopefully this shows you guys how big of a difference you can get just by upgrading that. And I would highly recommend it. But like I said in the beginning, for some people, if you're just doing simple, a few web browsing tabs, you're not doing too many stuff, or you just have one thing opened at a time, you could get away with it, but the value is not as good when you're talking about bang for the buck performance. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. We're gonna have other comparisons and other great videos for you guys. Check out that video right over there and software keep you low and I'll see you in the next one.